Welcome to Civility Matters, a coffee break chat, part of Safe Care BC's Hearts and Hands Virtual Conference 2020. Welcome. My name is Dr. Heather Cook, and I'm here today with my colleague, Rhonda Croft from the BC Nurses Union. Hi, and so glad you've joined us. What do we mean when we talk about workplace civility? Using the definition from the National Standard of Canada on psychological health and safety in the workplace, we can say that workplace civility characterizes a work environment where workers are treated with respect and consideration, where the organization effectively handles conflict between workers and workers from all backgrounds are treated fairly. So in contrast, what is workplace incivility? Well, workplace incivility is a low intensity deviant act that violates workplace norms for respectful interactions. And it's characterized by an ambiguous intent to harm, meaning that it's hard to prove that someone intended to hurt you with the behavior. Common examples include gossiping or talking about others behind their back, forming cliques that include some, but not others, not responding to requests for help from your colleagues, ignoring people, particularly new staff or casuals at report, not saying hello at the start of a shift, or not passing along the key information needed to complete a certain care task safely, or eye rolling as someone's request or comment during report. It's the passive aggressive behaviors like the one on the sign here about, please be an adult. The behavior is victimless, but it's uncivil. And in such instances, the culture of the workplace has perhaps become toxic. But sometimes these behaviors don't remain in the workplace, but spill out into our personal lives. So for example, home is typically a safe space where work doesn't intrude but our 24 seven access to smartphones and social media platforms like Facebook means incivility can now follow us home. Cyber incivility refers to the posts on social media like guess who didn't show up for work again. No one is named, but all of your colleagues know exactly who it is that you're talking about. And if you participate in a private Facebook group with your colleagues, you think that you have a confidential group, but all it takes is one person taking a screen grab and then posting that, and that image is permanently out there on the internet. Keep in mind that these are behaviors in which all of us have likely participated at some point or another. There's a lot of good people doing bad things at work. So take a few moments to consider the behaviors listed here and think whether you've ever witnessed or participated in such behaviors. Behaviors happen, but the challenge is when it becomes habitual that it starts to affect our workplace culture and morale. Now, most of the behaviors on the screen are low level behaviors. They're nothing you'd take to HR but rather they're the low intensity workplace dysfunction that breeds discontent. They're not typically egregious behaviors like that at the bottom of the screen that refers to yelling and screaming, but these are rather covert, subtle behaviors. It's a little like death by a thousand cuts. But if you're the target of these behaviors or even a witness to these behaviors, it can start to take its toll. So you might find yourself worrying about what's going to happen when you walk through the doors of your unit to begin a shift, or you might find yourself calling in sick for a shift or not asking for help when you need it because you feel like you just can't rely on your coworkers. And all of this has consequences for your physical and your psychological health and well-being. So keep in mind that we've been talking about pre COVID-19 workplaces. But since the spring, you've been working incredibly long hours under extraordinary pressure and maybe even more short staffed than you were previously. You've also experienced considerable changes in your workplace. For example, the single site order, the limited visitors at the site, 
the absence of support from families, there's been no staff appreciation barbecues or recognition events as outside food can't be brought in. All this to mean that you're spending more time with your colleagues than you ever have before and the workplace pressures are higher than they've ever been. So if this is incivility during non-COVID times, that is, it's the elephant in the room that we don't really talk about, this is incivility during COVID times and the elephant in the room has broken free. So the question is, how do we start to address this elephant in the room? We recognize that there are lots of systemic issues and challenges within long-term care right now, but this is a call to you as individuals to recognize what might be happening in your workplace and to give you some tools to help you not be trampled by the stampeding elephant. At this point, we wanna to transition to a bit more of a positive view. So if you're feeling like your cup is empty at this point, we wanna help you fill it up. Let's start with a cup of courage. It takes courage to want to be a catalyst for change. And we encourage you to start by taking notice of what's going on around you at work. Typically, if we see something in the physical environment that's unsafe, like a tripping hazard, we report it to the Occupational Health and Safety Committee and it gets fixed. Let's take that thought of if you see something, say something, and extend that thought to the psychological health and safety in your workplace. The earlier slides talked about observing behaviors in the workplace. Many of us are seeing things that bother us. We see things that don't seem to be addressed or changed, and over time that can lead to a toxic culture. It takes courage to initiate a conversation about difficult things. For instance, it's often easier to complain about a person to someone else than to offer some feedback to that workmate in private. Speak to someone directly if you feel safe enough to be able to do that. And if you do, it could sound like this, for example. And this is your conversation. When you said this to our coworker, she was quite hurt, but I'm not sure if you noticed how that landed for her. It's about having the courage to kindly confront someone's words or behaviors. And if someone comes to you with some feedback, think about the courage that they have mustered to be able to come to you. Try to accept this as a gift. And most importantly, that courage needs to be extended to yourself. How are you showing up at work? Have you moved from being a witness to a participant in uncivil behaviors? Maybe you need to initiate a loving and kind conversation with yourself. Let's talk about a cup of kindness. We all know what it is. We've extended it and we've been the recipient of kind acts. In times of stress, what people do is go into fight or flight responses. And we've already talked about the tremendous pressures that you've been under in long-term care under the past few months. So many of you are operating under this stress response already. Kindness might disappear. How that might look at work is every person for themselves. These are my residents. This is what I'm doing. If you need help, you're on your own. Because sometimes you feel that all you can manage is getting through your shift. But kindness is not a fluffy ideal. Acting kindly, speaking kindly, extending kindness can lead to amazing benefits. It increases energy, happiness, and health protection such as blood pressure regulation. It decreases depression, anxiety, and feelings of stress. It can be taught and modeled, which leads to recipients of kind acts paying it forward. Kindness is intentional, meaning it is a choice. We can either lift, others up or push them down. However, in the workplace, we need to be aware of who needs help and extend help towards them. We need to be able to ask for help for ourselves. I can help you with that today. Let's work together. Kindness begins with noticing what's going on and extending that kindness to others. Notice who's been left out of a conversation. Maybe put your phone aside in the lunchroom and have a conversation with a coworker. Check in as to how they're doing and how their day is going. A cup of kindness begins at the start of your shift, reaching out to see how people are doing, where they're at, and what they may need help with during the shift. It's channeling our inner Dr. Bonnie. 
be calm, be kind, be safe. Let's move on to a cup of self-care. We've left this cup at the end to the end because it might be just the most in essential ingredient. A broken cup isn't going to hold anything. All your good intentions will just leak out and disappear. We need to take care of ourselves, otherwise it's hard to be kind and courageous to others. Some of us are not treating ourselves with the kindness that we need and deserve. Are you sleeping well? Are you eating well? Are you doing anything to nurture your soul? Having fun is essential, even if that fun is now socially distanced. Are you making time for yourself? And if you found that you've lost your sense of humor, that is a sign you may be more stressed than you even realize. Try to have a laugh every day at work. Channel your inner child. Nap when you need to. Eat, play, forgive easily, cry and laugh. Be courageous and extend that kindness to yourself and then outwards. Know that you might screw up every now and then and give yourself the grace to learn from mistakes. Breathe, you've got this. What can you do every day? Neil Pasrika wrote a fabulous book called Our, You Are Awesome. And every day he does this. He takes an index card and writes, I will let go of, I am grateful for, I will focus on. What if we committed to doing the same thing daily? Just one small way to build the resiliency we need to putting one foot forward every day, to find our better selves, to find courage and kindness. We believe these are key to creating the civility we need right now more than ever. And here are a few resources for you. These are three books that we've chosen uh, and recommend for you to have a look at when you have time. So thank you to all of you for spending your coffee break with us today as we have a chat about civility and incivility in the workplace. Thank you to uh, our original artwork, which was provided by Caitlin Bauman and the images that were courtesy of Pixabay, Pixie, Flickr, and MeadPix. If any of you have any questions or would like more information, please don't hesitate to reach out either to myself at UBC, heather.smithcook at ubc.ca, or Rhonda at BCNU, rcroft at bcnu.org. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.